Huh? What are you doing in my swamp? As I'm having trouble making my normal videos, I decided to make one of a pretty small scope. Returning is my old friend Windows Movie Maker. <sighs> this is going to be a pretty long process. A wetland is an area where the level of groundwater is near or at the surface level, so that the area is consistently flooded and the soil saturated. This means that any vegetation in this region must be adapted to a lot of water being present most of the time. They occur where there's a lot of water input, but not a lot of water output. Ecologically, wetlands are really important, as they have high biodiversity in plants and animals, and are vital in the natural filtration of water and air. They are also important in protecting against shoreline erosion. The main types of wetlands are swamps, marshes, and mires. The most well-known being the swamp. The main characteristic of a swamp is that it's forested. Most trees don't take a liking to salt water, so swamps are usually freshwater. In the tropics, though, there are many saltwater swamps, as mangrove trees can survive there. Since the waters in a swamp are usually slow-moving or totally stagnant, a lot of aquatic plants will inhabit it. This will make it suitable for many types of freshwater species, and can lead to some interesting encounters in murky water. Swamps occur wherever there's a lot of freshwater that will flood into a region that can support forests, so flat lowlands with poor drainage, or at the banks of a slow-moving river or a lake. Swamps, with their high biodiversity, can host a multitude of animals, aquatic and terrestrial. Usually we associate animals like snakes, alligators, bugs, and large birds with this biome, but mammals and large predators can move into the swamp. And as an extra fun fact, people in the Middle Ages used to go digging in swamps for lumps of iron ore, as water that carries flakes of iron accumulates and can settle in swamps. I think that's pretty cool. Marshes are a little different. The difference between a marsh and a swamp is that a marsh is usually dominated by herbaceous plants like grass. Like swamps, marshes form in lowlands between land and water. They appear in flat areas of a shoreline or riverbank, blurring where the water ends and the land begins. Salt marshes most often appear in salt ponds, estuaries, and lagoons because of the slow-moving water of these areas combined with large areas of flat intertidal land. Marshes also usually have more distinct streams and rivers running through them, as the herbaceous plants cannot grow wherever the water moves quickly. This makes marshes more traversable than swamps, and also more interesting on maps. Marshes can provide reeds or papyrus and fish to anyone that lives there, and host a lot of animal species. Myers are a little different. They're a wetland that's characterized by a buildup of mosses that form a large soil layer of peat. For this to happen, the soil needs to be consistently waterlogged, which is easy because the moss that forms into peat likes to absorb a lot of water and release it very slowly. For the sake of simplicity, I'll say there are two types of mires, bogs and fens. Bogs have acidic water and are nutrient poor. Fens have more alkaline water and are nutrient rich. If the wetland is fed by sources that carry in a lot of nutrients, it'll become a fen. Bogs usually obtain their water from the rain. Fens, because they have hella nutrients, can over time turn into wet woodlands. Both are important when it comes to holding biodiversity though, and both can be important to humans, as peat can be gathered and used as a highly efficient fuel source, even though it releases a lot of carbon dioxide. Also, the acidic water in bogs can be used to tan animal hides and essentially mummify any humans that die in the water. Now wetlands are extremely important to the biosphere, but are often terrible for human development. They're hard to traverse and they're hard to build on, they carry a lot of diseases. This is why humans have historically gotten rid of them. Did you chop down this tree? Uh, no. But how do you get water out of a low area? Well, there are a bunch of ways. First off, you can fill the area with soil and garbage to raise its elevation. You can also install polders that will block water sources from filling the lowlands up. You can install pipes and canals that will flow the water out. Or you can use Archimedes screw, which basically acts as a medieval pump. If you do drain wetlands, you'll get more land to develop and pretty good farmland, but it will decrease the biodiversity in the area and may cause the ground to sink and any peat to dry up and become a major fire hazard. So next time you're playing Civ and you dig up a swamp, just take a moment and think to yourself, good. Hey everybody, what's going on? 
I just want to make a quick note at the end of this very brief video. Uh, having just surpassed a thousand subscribers, I'm very grateful for all the opportunities that you guys have given me. I really enjoy making these videos, and I know that I haven't pumped out that many recently, and I'm sorry about that, just there's a lot been going on having to do with my editing software, my mic, all that kind of stuff. I know it sounds like a bunch of BS excuses, but it's also that plus life. You know how it gets. Plus, this is just a hobby for me right now. Uh, nothing serious, but you know how it is. Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any corrections, all that kind of jazz, uh, same thing. Put them in the comments. If you want a, if you want to suggest a future topic that I can cover right away or whatever, or even email me about it. But yeah, thank you for all the support, guys. 1,000 subscribers is huge for me. Peace.